If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. For just $1 a month, your name can appear at the beginning of this and many other upcoming videos. <gasps> Mudbriar's been turned to stone? I didn't think I could love him anymore. Well, I guess those chickens made him rock hard. God, I'm lonely. With this being the final season, I was hoping for an episode where the writers would broaden their horizons a bit. Just a little something different from what we'd normally expect. And for the most part, Student Council is a nice example of that kind of idea. It shows how the staff still have some creativity for stories that don't involve any of the main characters. Instead making a story out of several side characters and having their personalities mix in a way that works with the setup. Instead of just reusing ideas they used before with the main seven, they give us something different and unique. Starlight and Trixie are trying to get things ready for Mud and Mod's Spring Stolstastic Party. But things get a little bit hectic when Starlight gets caught up in her work at the school. Yeah, I guess that's still kind of a thing. Eventually, Starlight does make time for helping Trixie and the gang are ready to throw the party. But Terramar returns to tell the group that Silverstream has gone missing. When it's discovered that she might have gone into the Everfree Forest to study cockatrice, the gang head inside to search for her before she turns to stone. I honestly never thought I'd see an episode where Terramar, Mod Pie, Mudbriar, Starlight, Sunset, and Trixie would be teaming up for something. And I never thought it would be an idea for an episode that I would like. The episode's biggest strength by far is just how perfectly all these different characters and their personalities work off each other. It's a really odd team-up, but they find a way to make it so much fun to watch. The interactions between them are fresh and unique, and the chemistry they share is really natural and it goes in all sorts of interesting directions. It's really nice to basically see a team of geeks with vastly different interests where working off each other, and none of them overshadow each other getting just the right amount of screen time each. And because of this, the episode has really good pacing, never dragging out for too long or feeling rushed. It's just a really good setup for an episode and the choice of character combinations complements it excellently. I also really like how Mud was handled in the episode. In his first appearance, he was kind of just a watered-down imitation of Mod. I didn't hate him or even dislike him that much, he just came across as boring to spend time with. Not to mention, his technical talk started to get really repetitive. But in this episode, it really feels like he has more of a personality. He's still himself, but they also give him more expression and diverse dialogue instead of just making him a joke gone too far. He explains his feelings a bit more, and he shows how he has a really big heart to make up for his lack of charisma. He says Starlight technically wasn't alone, but expresses how he and the group still wanted to help with an adorable smile. The way Mud expresses himself in this scene just feels really genuinely nice. Plus, it is nice to see how his technical talk is acknowledged to be annoying in-universe, so it's obviously not just Pinky's problem. I just really like how he went from dull and slightly irritating to an adorable sweet guy who's improving on his flaws. And it's always great to see Mod expressing a broader range of emotion. It shows how the episode is actively building off the Mod couple and it's a nice piece of development for her character. I admit that after a certain incident in On the Road to Friendship, I was a bit skeptical in how Starlight and Trixie would be handled in this episode. Thankfully, they seem to have a much better understanding this time around and there isn't any mean-spirited vibes from anything that happens between them. What really makes it work is the episode shows both of their points of view in a way that makes them both understandable. The conflict that Trixie was having with Starlight was prominent, since she was repeatedly making promises she wasn't able to keep, which would obviously make her irritated the more times it would happen. She acknowledges how important Starlight's job is, but she also explains how when you make plans with a friend, you need to take the time to keep them. During the first act, we see how she was putting a lot of hard work and effort into getting things ready for the party, and it's shown how doing this with Starlight as a means to spend time with her was really personal to her. She does tend to lose her patience, but she also comes across as really mature about the situation. There is one time where she comes across as mean-spirited by abusing a student who looked genuinely sad and in need of Starlight's advice, but her behavior for the most part never comes across as unjustified. Even when making jabs at Starlight, she still comes to her defense and supports her. On the other hand, they take the time to show how pressured Starlight feels between helping set up the party and fulfilling her responsibilities at the school. She was clearly putting forth an effort to do both things at once, she just had no way of knowing how overwhelming it was going to be. 
and she genuinely feels bad that she was letting Trixie down. She realizes the mistake she made and actually puts her foot down to resolve the problem by making time for Trixie to help make the cake. She makes the responsible decision to apologize to Trixie, puts forth an effort to keep her promise, and do something with her face to face. It's also nice how the episode doesn't have her performing any ridiculous magic spells to solve the problem, demonstrating how she's not relying on magic as an easy out for resolving a friendship-related issue. It's some nice progression on her end considering her prior mistakes. She also gets into a bit of turmoil when she starts beating herself up feeling guilty over abandoning her duties the one time it mattered. Though this was pretty much Silverstream's fault anyway, which we'll be getting to in a moment. Throughout the episode, Starlight is showing how she's taking these types of responsibilities to heart. And even if she doesn't always get it right, she shows gradual improvement over how she approaches a situation. And it also makes for a really good moral about trying to balance time between your friends and your job. It's a huge responsibility in hindsight, but an important one to learn as well. Something that a lot of cartoons don't really touch upon. The episode works as a really good allegory for this kind of thing, taking the time to show both sides of it and why they're equally important. And it also feels like a good complimentary lesson to Once Upon a Zeppelin. In that one, the lesson was don't neglect yourself for your work. In this one, it's don't neglect your work for yourself. It's a really nice thing to talk about, and it's nice that the show took the time to tackle an issue like this. But there are some issues to be taken with this episode. Maybe this is just a me problem, but I really don't like how they keep messing with Maud's physical strength. In her very first episode, she threw a giant rock thousands of miles away with enough force to cause a nuclear explosion shockwave. But after that, we never see it again, and they show Mott being kind of a weakling when she's clearly demonstrated more impressive feats in strength. She shouldn't be having a hard time dragging Mutt around, she should be heroically carrying him around in two feet. And if Starlight was aware of the treehouse, why didn't she go there first? She literally said that it should have been the first place to look, and she seemed to know where it was, so she could have just teleported there. This whole conflict would have been avoided if she just teleported to the treehouse. Then again, it also would have been avoided if Silverstream had just taken the time to let her family know where the hell she was. Starlight spent a lot of time blaming herself when it was really her fault for not being responsible enough to send her family a letter or some kind of message. Not only does this make her look dumb and careless, but it emphasizes how the conflict was a result of her actions and it would have been incredibly easy to resolve. I mean, there is some nuance with her making a breakthrough in cockatrice studies and possibly having one as a pet, but it's still really dumb that she couldn't bother to remember to let anyone know where she was. But even with those issues, this was still a really nice and fun episode. It shows the writer's impressive ability to tell a story with secondary characters and teaches a really important lesson along the way. The characters are a lot of fun, and it has a distinct charm to it that makes it one of the more unique episodes of the season. And next week, we have a huge reveal of an episode synopsis, and I cannot wait to talk about this one. So until next time, take care of yourselves, and stay awesome. This is Map, signing out.